Hi guys, welcome to Amacho Hemistry. Today I'm going to show you around the amazing world of matches, but before we can take the ride, we need to start with a lesson of match anatomy. So, of course, all normal people know that it's just the red fire something head and they would stick, but the hemis, who are not normal, see it as potassium chloride with antimony sulfate, sulfur dye and ground glass at the top, and the wood part is still wood but soaked in paraffin. There's also the matchbox which has some red phosphorus on the sides. With power of these ingredients we can do a ton of interesting things. So our first point of interest is the potassium chloride with the chemical formula of KClO3. A typical match head contains about 50% of it. It is the main ingredient allowing the match to burn. When you ignite a match it reacts with the phosphorus and generates heat which initiates a chemical reaction with sulfur which in turn allows the match to burn. An interesting detail is that it's kinda hard to buy and once I got raided by the police when trying to buy it for making a flare from the recipe I found online. The reason it is forbidden to buy is that it's a potent oxidizer which can spontaneously react with various fuels and can be used in improvised bomb making, so it is best to keep away from it. If you really want to play with it, you can extract it from a match. To do that, you need to scrape the match head material and soak it in some warm water. Then wait a little and pour the water out without the undissolved stuff and dry it. To speed up the drying, you can put it into an oven or build a homemade desiccator from both salt as shown here. The first step is to get some magnesium chloride bath salt and pour around 300 grams of it to a dish. Then transfer the bath salt to a pot and start boiling. If your bath salt is old and was kept in a wet environment, it is going to be very wet. This is happening because the magnesium chloride attacks water molecules and chemically bonds with them becoming a hydrate. The boiling process gets rid of most of the water and leaves behind chemically dry chloride which we can use as a drying agent for our desiccator. After the boiling, you need to pour it into a mold and leave it to cool down. After cooling, you can crush it into smaller pieces and put them into a hermetic container with the match extract. The result is a crude mixture of potassium chloride, sulfur and dye, which doesn't burn by itself but can speed up burning of other things such as this piece of rope, which now became homemade fuse. Another thing you can do with it is enriching it with some other flammable stuff like HMTD and it will burn really well. I made HMTD in a previous video, so if you would like to know more about it, you should go and check it out. Another interesting thing in the match empire is the red phosphorus from the match boxes. There are multiple varieties of phosphorus, but the most popular are red phosphorus and white phosphorus. The first one is kind of safe and not that dangerous, however it is still best to avoid working with it, and the white variant is dangerous as nuts. It ignites in the air by itself, is difficult to extinguish when melted sticks to everything and speeds burning drops everywhere, but the best part is that the smoke is actually phosphorus pentoxide, which in contact with water in your lungs creates phosphoric acid. It's stupendously dangerous and its main use is in the military as a weapon, although it has been banned by the Geneva Convention. So, oh, what all of this has to do with matchboxes? Well, it turns out that many lifehack channels have done an experiment where they burn a piece of matchbox containing phosphorus and then they pick up the residue left after burning, rub their fingers against it and then smoke magically appears. Well, by burning red phosphorus it rearranges its atoms to make white phosphorus, which then burns to make phosphorus pentoxide. 
so this experiment is very dangerous and should be attempted in gloves and outside. Some other non-chemical stuff that you can do with matches include making a super simple match launcher. All you need to do is to attach three matches to a match box like shown here. It is important to know that there needs to be tension between them and then ignite this contraption in the place of two touching match heads and watch the middle match fly away pretty far. The match will always fly to the side of the ignition. Another way to make matches fly is to make a match rocket. It is very simple and all you need to do is to cut a match head, wrap it in some aluminum foil with a wooden stick as shown here and you are ready to go. To launch your rockets, all you need to do is just to hit it up the top. The distance it can travel is honestly quite impressive. So the last trick involves just two bolts, a nut and some match head material. To get this to work you need to assemble it like this and hit it with a hammer. It generates a long sound and some smoke. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you like the video and see you in the next one.